All right, everyone. So trying to pull this up on my phone because I do not have any moderator or <laughs> friends sitting in with me today. We're a little short on office staff um, today. So I'm just gonna be monitoring um, all of the comments and everything myself, pulling it up on my phone. So gonna give a second, I know that's like such an annoying thing to hear when you're actually watching it live, but, um, and especially when you're not watching it live and you're watching it later, but I'm gonna let some people jump on. Um, also a quick warning or heads up or whatever the word is. I've noticed sometimes on previous lives that we've done, for some reason, I don't always see every single comment that comes through on my, on my phone. Um, and so if you do comment a question or something like that and I do not address it, just comment it again. I'm really sorry. I'm not sure why my phone has trouble with that, but let's see. Okay. So I have it pulled up here. Hopefully I can monitor well, stay on task. Happy Friday. I hope everyone has had an amazing week. I feel like this has been for some reason, one of the busiest weeks of my year so far. And I cannot tell you why, but it has been. So I hope you've had a great week, productive week, and I hope you have amazing plans for the weekend. Um, I am going to go ahead and share my screen and pull up our presentation here. Let's see. So, all right, now we're gonna full view. So um, if you have seen any of the posts prior to this webinar or any of the ads, um, hopefully you know today we will be talking about all things Instagram, Instagram Marketing 101. So just a quick little introduction of myself. If you don't know me, hopefully this lets you um, get to know me a little bit. My name is Lydia Murphy. I am the social media coordinator here at Ugly Mug Marketing. And I have a few little things um, some go-tos if I had to describe myself here. So I'm an avid snacker. Um, I don't have the biggest appetite, so I don't really eat big meals, but <laughs> um, I can snack throughout the entire day without a problem. So I love snacks. I'm also a dog mom. I have a puppy. Her name is, well, I say she's a puppy. She's over a year old, but she's my puppy. Her name is Pepper and she's adorable. Um, I also have another dog. My husband has a dog. His name is Cooper. Um, I don't claim him because he had him before we got married. So I won't personally claim him, but we do have two dogs and we love them very much. I'm also a self-proclaimed Netflix enthusiast. Um, let me know what you've been binging on Netflix. I just recently finished the newest season of the show Dead to Me. It was super good. Very binge worthy. If you haven't watched it, please do, please do watch it. Um, we also, me and my husband watched The 100, um, and we used to watch it when we were not even dating yet, and then we kind of stopped, but we restarted it, and it's addicting, so I also recommend The 100 on Netflix. Um, the last little thing I'm going to share about myself is that I believe I am either <laughs> a type 4 on the Enneagram or a type 9. I used to be, like, gung-ho that I was type 4, but here lately I'm kind of conflicted. I think I could be a type nine. So if you're into that, one of those, or maybe both, I don't know if it's okay to be both, but that's how I would describe myself. Um, so, oh, Michelle watching Schitt's Creek. I've actually never seen that, but I know a lot of people that watch it. So I'll probably have to get on that show. Um, thank you for the recommendation. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> glad you're watching, Michelle. I know you had commented, so I'm super glad you got to tune in. But we're just going to go ahead and dive in today. So um, I'm just going to quickly go over what we're going to cover. So let me see actually if this is even sharing the right way because it looks like it's still stuck on a different screen. Let's look. I'm obviously really good at this. Can you tell? Okay, we're here. Maybe. There we go. It's delayed, so let me see and make sure on my phone. 
but I think I fixed it. Sorry, guys. Um, oh, and now here comes the rain. Perfect. Oh, Lindsay. Yay, I'm glad Lindsay, Lindsay is watching. She also watches Schitt's Creek. Okay, yes, I did fix it. So now you can actually see what I'm going through. Also, it really did just start pouring. I'm sorry if you can hear that. I'm not sure if you can on my <laughs> computer audio, but um, maybe this is Tropical Storm Hannah coming to hit us. Who knows? All right, guys, I'm going to dive into the content for today. If you have any questions at any time, let me know, but I will be doing a full Q&A at the very end. Um, so if I don't address it right when you send it in, then I will be sure to go back and check at the very end. So what we're going to cover today, we are going to go over who is actually on Instagram, demographics that um, appear the most on this platform. We're going to go over some Instagram basics. So just if you're starting out, you're brand new, or you've been on there a while and you just aren't sure exactly what you should be doing, we're going to go over all of those basics there. We're going to talk about the power of consistency. And we're also going to be talking about presets. I'll talk a little bit more about what that means when we get to that section, but we're going to be talking about those. And then lastly, I made this last because it's probably one of um, the most thought about things when you're on Instagram. So you have to stay tuned. But we're going to talk about how to gain followers organically, unpaid on Instagram. So I'm super excited. Like I said, let me know if you have any questions while I'm going through everything and I'll be sure to touch on those. But let's start off. Who is on Instagram? If you have a guess before I display it all up here, let me know. Um, I know it is a little bit delayed from what I'm saying to when it shows up to you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go. But let me know if you have any guesses of the demographics of the, of the people most prevalent on Instagram. So doing some research, it says that 75% of all 18 to 24 year olds are on Instagram. That's huge. Okay. That is a really, really large number of a demographic to be on a certain platform. Um, another super cool metric as well is that 57% of all 25 to 30 year olds are also on Instagram. So those are the two biggest you could even probably maybe reach up to 35, um, but I would say 17 to 35, male and female, that is the perfect audience on Instagram. So let's see, yeah, Michelle, you were totally right, 18 to 34, Nancy, 22 to 32, exactly, y'all are right there in that range. So we're basically talking about millennials. I know there's like a million and one debates on what exactly the age range is for a millennial, but for sake of ease of conversation, <laughs> I'm gonna refer to these people as millennials. I'm also gonna share a little bit later, have some notes on some statistics that I found. And the website I was looking at referred to millennials as 18 to 35. So that's what we're gonna go with. Sorry if you don't agree with me. Um, so yes, millennials are the primary audience that take up Instagram. If you are a business and your target audience is in this age range, this is the perfect platform for you. So if you're not there, you need to be there. If you are there and you just aren't sure if you're doing it right, then this is the perfect thing for you. If you're there and you feel like you have it perfectly on point, maybe you can learn a couple things um, from this presentation, but that is the main thing I wanna focus on is for this section, is this age range is who you're primarily going to be hitting when you're on Instagram, okay? so. Um, hopefully if you're watching this, you do have people in this age range who are in your target market because this will be even more beneficial for you. Next up, we are going to be going over just some Instagram basics. These are honestly just from my opinion, what I think some of the basics are, uh, if you're starting out or even if you've been on there just to kind of refresh you. Um, so very first thing, main thing I want to get across image is your headline on Instagram. So this is a little bit different than Facebook. We'll use that as an example. So on Facebook, obviously, when you're scrolling, um, <laughs> Michelle cracks me up. When you're scrolling on Facebook, the first thing you see in an ad, in a post, whatever, is the copy, is the text of the ad or the post. So whatever textually is there, you are reading first, you are your eyes look at first, 
and then you look at the image you look at the actual if there's a link you look at the link description all of those things but on facebook you look at the text first so when we're making a, a facebook ad or a facebook campaign we try to make sure that our headline on facebook so that is the first line of text that someone reads is engaging and is capturing that audience so on instagram what we mean by image is your headline when someone's scrolling on instagram the visual that you are attaching to your to your content is the first thing they see and it has to be engaging it takes up i mean i don't know i would say like 60 percent of the screen when they're <laughs> scrolling maybe more so your visual media has to be on point i feel like that's a super millennial thing to say like on point but it does um it's super important that you are using great photos, great videos, um, high quality. It's not like super blurry or anything like that. So just because you don't want that to be the first impression that someone gets from your social media. I'm gonna take a quick break. I have my camel back here. I feel like I talk so fast and then it's like, I can't breathe. I don't know if anyone else can relate. But that is the, the overarching principle I want you to stick in your brain <laughs> when we go through the rest of this is that the image, the visual media you are presenting is your headline. It's the most important of all of this. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, next up, let's talk about bios. Okay, so this, my tip here would be, you want your bio to include either the one, maybe the two or three things, the first things that someone who has no idea who your business is, what your business does, they've never heard of you before and they visit your profile, what are the things that you want them to know immediately about you? I have a few examples. First is just our Instagram bio. If someone saw a post from us or they heard about us and they were looking for us and they went to our Instagram page, what are the things immediately that I want them to know about us? I want them to know our services. So we offer web design, social media marketing, general marketing. If there's a website that they can click and go learn even more about us um, and then our address so they know where we are locally so if they're a local um, business or local person they probably know that DeSoto Street is downtown um, so they kind of have a, a gist of our environment where they can find us but if they're not completely local they see Alexandria Louisiana so they kind of understand our region all of those things those are the immediate things I want someone to know and understand when they visit Ugly Mug Marketing's Instagram. Another example is our client Little Cakes with Big Attitude. So up here you see right under their name, it already tells you um, their category. So they are a dessert shop. And then I love that they have included their drive-through hours in their bio because right now they are only offering drive-through services. And it's been that way for a while since COVID hit in March. And who knows how long it will continue to be that way. None of us really know. So the drive through is their life source, right? So they want people who are um, coming to learn more about Little Cakes or going to visit their profile. What do they want them to know? They want them to know when they're open and they can actually buy from them. So you can see their hours there, again, their website and their address, um, just like the Ugly Mug one as well. So love that example. And then the next one, it actually, so their name on Instagram is not their actual handle, but this I stole from Lemoyne Productions. I'm not sure if they will be watching this at all at any point, but I wanted to give them a quick shout out because I went and looked and I loved their bio. So I've worked with Lemoyne Productions um, for some client work, some video work. They are primarily um, a wedding videographer, but they do amazing commercial work. If you need commercial video, I highly recommend. But um, I loved that their bio here says, Okay, first, you see that they're a videographer. Then it says DM us for availability. So I don't believe right now, currently, they have a running or working website. So like most people might go to a website and contact a videographer or photographer there. You already know immediately, I want to contact them. I'm going to DM them. I love that. It makes it super short and clear. And then I also love the little hook, like, let us tell your story. Now booking 2020 and 20. 21. Love that. Super personal, personal, and um, just super sweet. I don't know. I like it. I also love that they have their personal handles in their bio. And so they're saying, hey, if you want to get to know more about us personally, 
go look at our um, personal Instagrams and hang out with the, hang out with us there. I thought that was super cool. And then lastly, you see that link there is the link to the Sin Lodge Choice Awards. So if you have not been voting for that, um, oh, Courtney is watching. Yay. Um, I'm bragging about you, Courtney. So you see that they are pushing people to vote to that on that link for the Sin Lodge Choice Awards. Um, and I know that they are probably making actual posts about that and telling people to go click the link in their bio. So I thought that was amazing, especially since they don't actually have a running website of their own right now. And then again, you see where they're located at, which is amazing. So those are my tips for creating um, a bio for your business on Instagram. Let me know if you have any questions about what should be included in yours. But again, just to reiterate, making sure you're including the first thing or things, maybe one, two or three things that someone that does not even know who you are, what they should know immediately when they visit your Instagram. Okay, next up. Instagram basics, we are going to be talking about story highlights. Um, so just kind of to show you what that is, if you've never heard of it or what it means, story highlights are these little sections on your profile that you can create and save all of your old stories that you've posted because I'm sure most of you know if you're on Instagram, but if you're not, I'll explain. If you post a story, um, that is just a quick piece of visual content um, that someone can watch, but it only lasts on your page unless you delete it prior, <laughs> but it only lasts for 24 hours. So if you want that content to live on your page for longer than that and be accessible for longer than that, create a highlight. Um, there are so many ways that you can create these little covers for them. Like you see these little cute pictures and colors. Um, I did those in Canva, but super customizable. I just think it's so important to make sure if there's stuff on your story that you want people to be able to view again, make them accessible. I know personally, I go to um, people's profiles a lot. And if I'm just like looking at their regular posts and then I see that they have certain highlights that look interesting to me, like I will sit there and watch a story highlight for God knows how long. Um, probably too long. So people are watching them. People enjoy them. My major tip though is please do not create those highlights with those pretty little pictures and everything and then don't use them don't put anything under them because it's wasted opportunity if someone's going to be interested in clicking on that and there's nothing there for them to see why even have it okay so if you're going to use them make sure you're updating them um another quick little tip i've noticed so many people this is like probably just a pet peeve that i feel like i wanted to share I know so many people that actually post these little um, like cover almost uh, story covers on their story because they think they have to post them to be able to use them, but that's not actually true. So if you don't want to actually post them on your story, let me know. I can show you, but you basically just create the story and then you go back and hit edit and you can choose a photo from your camera roll to be the cover. Um, sorry, that was just a tangent kind of, but it's actually, Misha, it's super easy to create story highlights. When you go on the page um, and you're on your own profile, there's a little, if you, even if you have them already, um, you just click, there's a little circle that's the exact same size as these ones here. It's a plus sign. Click the plus sign and it will bring up all of your, what they call archived um, stories. So, and then you can select each individual one that you want. So if you were gonna do one that was like, um, weekly specials and maybe you had examples like if um, Monday was like a burger or something if you had a story of that you just click on each of those that you want and then there's probably like something that says done or create or whatever click that and then it will compile them all you get to name it and then like I said if you wanted to create a cute little cover thing on it just go create that somewhere save it in your camera roll and you can adjust the cover there but I think it's super user-friendly um, and I think that would definitely be something that could be beneficial for Good People Kitchen. So let me know if you have any other questions about that, but I do think they're pretty easy to use. All right, next up, how to schedule posts on Instagram for free. I think I've gotten this question a lot actually, and this is a new feature. I'm not actually positive how new, but I would say within the last maybe six months, this has become available. So in the past, I don't believe there was um, a reliable or trustworthy 
free way to schedule posts to your Instagram page. Um, but Facebook has come in clutch and they have created what they call their creator studio. So if you're on Facebook business a lot, you may have seen this come up. Um, I get a million and one little banner things about it on our clients pages. But basically, if you go to your publishing tools on your Facebook page, um, on the left hand side, you'll see so automatically it's going to go to your published posts as is selected right there. But you'll see that little thing under tools that says Creator Studio. So you want to click that. You're welcome, you're welcome Misha. Um, you want to click that and then it will bring up a new window and that is your Creator Studio. So if this only works, by the way, if your business Instagram account is connected to your business Facebook account. I'm not going to get into the details of how to do that just because um, it's a little more on the logistics. If you do need help with that, though, let me know. And I will try to get in contact with you after this and show you how. But those two have to be connected. So go to your creator studio and it looks like this. So this is ours for ugly mug. Um, you'll see right here at the top, make sure you are selected on the Instagram view inside of things and not the Facebook side of things. But go on your Instagram side. You can hit this thing right here that says create post. And you can even select posts that you've already created for your Facebook. You literally select it. It brings up the photo or the video or whatever it is, the copy, the text, and you can just post it. And the cool thing is you can schedule it. So um, not much else to say, really. <laughs> I mean, I just think it's super cool that you can now schedule things for free on your Instagram account through your Facebook. It's super easy. Um, so if you're already scheduling posts for your Facebook, then um, then you already have the system down in the process and it'll be that much easier. Quick water break again. Oh, yay. <laughs> Another quick break. Okay, so I want to know, all, you, all of you watching, what is one of your favorite Instagram accounts? I actually pulled up on this little picture here. They're not even a client of ours, but I love Dress to the Bixby's Instagram. I just think that they are super consistent and their um, branding is super consistent and it's just really cool. I like theirs, so I wanted to share that. Um, but let me know in the comments what is one, even if it's not, well, I mean, I would prefer if it was a business because that's kind of what we're talking about. But even if it's not, just share that with me. And if you can even explain why it's one of your favorites, I think that would be cool. Um, Nancy likes the accessory junkie Instagram. I've never heard of that. I'm actually going to write that down because I want to look at these later because I just think it's super interesting to see what people like. And it keeps me um, in the know because that's my job, right? I need to know what people like on social media. Um, I really should have prepared a specific one in mind for me, but Colton likes the Halo Top <laughs> Instagram account. My assumption is because he enters every single giveaway that they've ever done. Um, Halo Top does have a great Instagram presence though, that's good. Let's see, we have, sorry, I'm gonna pick up my phone so I don't have to look down so much. Marie likes Smiling Eric. Oh, because he prompts us to interact with each other. I'm gonna look that one up, that sounds really cool. I love accounts that are super engaging with their audience, right? Because that's actually something I was gonna bring up in a little bit. Um, sorry, I'm just like in the middle of reading. So wait, Smiling Eric, I'm trying to write these down guys so I can do some stalking later. But yeah, I just love accounts that encourage interaction and engagement um, because that's like my favorite part of social media. Michelle likes the rap life. Michelle, is that like a food account? Cause that's what it sounds like, but I'll look it up and find out. Nancy said that the accessory junkie account showcases jewelry artisans from around the world. Ooh, that sounds really cool. Um, Kenneth said, wait, Vault Coffee. That sounds really familiar. And I feel like I might follow them, maybe. 
but I don't know. <laughs> I follow, I think I follow a lot of coffee shops and coffee brands, so I could be wrong. Um, Brittany said, it's not local, but I like momentary happ happiness. That sounds cool. I'm writing that down. Wow, guys, thanks for sharing these. I love finding new um, businesses and stuff to follow. Dirk likes Gary V. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there with you, Dirk. Oh, Michelle said, no, it's hair wraps. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Still cool though. Nancy also said, boss babes. Sounds like something I would be into. I'll look at that. Oh wait, momentary happiness. She said, she is a writer and her posts consist of thoughts, advice, and insights. I like that a lot. I know I like those types of content because I feel like um, <laughs> um, wait what was I saying I, I cannot have a conversation and look at the comments because I get maybe I have like ADHD like my dad does I don't know but I like those types of content from like writers and things because like you're scrolling so much and your brain is just kind of shut off <laughs> and then when you actually see something like thought-provoking it's like oh yeah, I'm a human. I have feelings and emotions. That's cool. Um, Kenneth said, isn't your love of coffee an interview question from Wayne? Maybe. Wayne does love coffee. Um, awesome. Thank you guys for sharing all of those. Nancy said, boss babes is everything to do with women's in business and all aspects. Love that. Love women in business. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, and then Marie sent a little um, adjustment on how to spell it. So Eric with a K. Good to know. Let me fix that. Awesome guys. Just trying to make sure I'm not missing any. If you think of some while we're continuing on, um, then make sure to drop them again below. Also, I just noticed I forgot to change my name on this little zoom screen. Still says Hannah Acosta, but I'm Lydia. I'm not Hannah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, okay. Great little uh, break in session. Thank you guys for sharing those, but we're going to try to keep trudging along. Next up, this is still technically under basics, Instagram basics, but I wanted to go over, and I should probably move if I can, this little bubble with my face. Um, So I wanna go over some quick tips for taking photos on your iPhone or honestly just your phone in general. It doesn't have to be an iPhone, but quick tips for iPhone photography. I have, I believe three. They are in no particular order because I think they're all equally important, but I wanted to share those. You might know of these already. And if you do, that's amazing. But I wanted to share my quick tips in case you aren't aware of some of the important things while you're taking a photo on your phone. My first one, is the rule of thirds. Okay, so um, this might be something you've heard of before. If not, it might seem a little bit more challenging or odd than it really is. But on your phone, there's a way to turn on a grid when you open your camera. So it's really, you just go to your settings, go to camera, and then it's like a little toggle that you just turn on if you don't have it on already turn on your grid and then when you are taking a photo you want to so you look at those lines you have two lines vertically two lines horizontally and it creates these um rectangles on your screen right so you have nine spaces you want the subject of your photo to be placed in one of those intersections right so um again it's called the rule of thirds so it's like splitting your phone into thirds each way. So there's like psychology and studies that have been done that prove this. I probably should have looked them up so I could cite it, but I didn't. But there's science behind, um, there's a reason. And our brains love visual content that follows the rule of thirds. It's just visually appealing to us and it's just more pleasing to the eye. So it, the, what is that word? The default or the go-to when we're taking a photo is to put it in the direct middle of the camera view. While sometimes I think that is okay and sometimes that looks the best, 
um, a lot of times your visual content is going to be so much more appealing and interesting when you follow the rule of thirds and you place your um, your subject of your photo at one of those cross points or those intersections. So that's my first tip. If you don't fully understand that, you can Google it. I'm sure there are much, much better explanations out there. Um, but that's my first one. My second tip would be lighting. So if at all possible, use natural lighting. Natural lighting is amazing, especially actually um, this. I don't know if this is like a photography myth or whatever. But if it's overcast outside, that's like the perfect lighting for <laughs> for any sort of outdoor photography, um, just because you're not going to have any super harsh shadows or highlights or anything like that. It really just smooths everything out and makes it um, super suave. Sorry, I wanted to use that word. So this is a photo of a little succulent we have in the office um, that is sitting right by a window. You can't actually see the window, but it's literally like two inches away from it. And so I have a lot of this natural light coming in and you can still see a little bit of those natural shadows, but it's nothing super harsh. Um, so making sure that you have a good source of lighting. If you don't have natural light, you can buy a ring light. I don't have any specific examples. I own a ring light. I just bought it off of Amazon, but it's just a circular piece of equipment <laughs> that you can emit light from. Um, the one I have is actually cool because you can adjust the, um, the color on it slightly. So you can have like true white, you can have blue white and you can have yellow light or yeah, 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 yellow light. Um, so depending on what you're photographing, some of those settings might look better than others. So that's really cool. Um, if you don't have a ring light and you feel like you just don't, wherever you are in your workplace or your, your restaurant or your store, and you feel like you don't have a great spot that has great natural lighting and your overhead lighting is just horrible, definitely invest in a ring light. Seriously, just like get on Google and look up ring light and thank me later. Um, so tip number two is lighting. My last tip you'll see it's the same photo, just slightly different is color. Okay, so literally the exact same photo. I just, and I did this editing in the iPhone camera editing space. <laughs> so I didn't go on any other apps. I didn't use Lightroom. I didn't use um, Visco, VSCO, whatever it's called. I didn't use anything. I was just in the photos app, hit edit. And there are little things that you can do to adjust on your photos. So like I said before, right, image is your headline. So automatically pops of color, things that are a little more saturated, they're just going to stand out a little bit more on, a, on someone's feed. Um, so on this photo, all I adjusted, I don't have the specific measurements, but I amplified the brilliance. So that is one little circle of things that you can adjust. If you go look at a photo and click edit and um, look around on there, you'll see all of these. But I adjusted the brilliance. I adjusted the saturation. So saturation affects, um, like if it's turned up, all your greens are gonna be a little bit brighter green. If you turn it down, it's gonna go towards like a gray scale. Um, and then vibrance, I adjusted vibrance as well. I did uh, exaggerate all of these a little bit more than I probably would have for a normal photo, but I wanted you to get the gist of what these things can do. Like if I go back to the original photo unedited, Look how much, like, your brain almost thinks that's grayscale, but it's not <laughs> because that's a green plant. It just happens to be that the lighting and um, the carpet beneath it is actually that kind of grayish blue. So it kind of washes those other things out. But if you adjust that color, look how much more appealing that is. I think color makes such a drastic change when you're editing. Um, so that would be my three tips for iPhone photography, you can use the rule of thirds, make sure you have great lighting. Natural lighting is the best. If you don't have natural lighting, get a ring light. Um, and then using color. And even if your photo does not naturally produce a lot of color, you can edit it very simply um, just on your iPhone camera app and you'll be set. So those are my tips. Next up, let's talk about the power of consistency. So, okay, I have an example. I blurred out the 
handle or the um, actual name of the profile here. But in the comments, let me know, who do you think posted this? What account? I'm gonna wait for the first one before I keep going because I need to make sure someone actually guesses to prove my point. So let me know, who do you think posted this on Instagram? We'll see who goes first. There's no prize, but I'll say your name. Any guesses? Anybody know? I really hope someone can guess because this is literally my entire point. This is all writing on it. Yes, Lindsay got it. <laughs> this was posted by Target. Okay, so I can pose the question, but I don't wanna make everyone like wait super long. Um, but if I had to guess, Lindsay said Target and guessed Target because a few reasons. One, okay, also let me say, if you don't follow and keep up with Target's advertising and you're not really in their market, then you may, have, you may not have known that and that's fine. Um, but I follow Target, I go to Target all the time and um, I see their advertisements in general a lot. So I would assume that Lindsay is in the same boat with me. And so I know a lot of things about Target's advertising. I know things that my brain doesn't even register sometimes. So I know the fonts that they use. My brain recognizes the fonts um, and the colors. So, and even the little print, like the little polka dots, they use that a lot in their, um, in their visual creative and media and stuff like that. But oh, I'm seeing some of the comments. Misha guessed it was a dentist. That's a good guess because of what it actually says. But I was thinking more of like the design aspects that made it apparent to me. So um, I'll just show, yes, it was Target. So when you are consistent the way that Target is and the colors that they're using, the fonts that they're using, the type of media that they share, because they share a lot of these like uplifting quote type things a lot. Um, when I'm scrolling on Instagram and I see because image is the headline, so I see their photo before I see anything else. That's where my eyes go. I know that this is a Target post before I ever look and see that it's Target. And that is so powerful because when your branding is consistent enough, um, you can make people think of you before they even actually know it's you. So I think I have another example. Yes. People are going to remember what you, I'll put that in quotes, not your face, not your body, but your brand, what you look like. So my example here, I screenshotted Nikki Bardwell, um, her photography businesses, Instagram. I love Nikki. She's super sweet. I don't know if she'll be watching this, but I did steal her Instagram account for this example. So when I'm scrolling, just because I follow Nikki a lot, if you don't follow Nikki and know a little bit about her style or keep up with her that way, then you won't remember what she looks like, right? But if she is in your audience, you are pushing your media in front of her a lot. She's going to, I'm going to remember that. Um, so you can see here, her feed is just very consistent. The color, um, the way that she edits and she is a photographer. So, um, she does come by that a little bit <laughs> more naturally than some of us might, but there are ways that we can do that. Um, I'll get into that with presets. Um, but when I see, and that, I think that's so important too for people like photographers because that market and that world is almost so oversaturated. Um, when you can post a photo and I know your style enough to know Nikki posted that, that's powerful. I see a comment, let me look at it. How does this scale to a very small one woman shop? Target is a major conglomerate with entire department day. Okay, yeah, I would agree with that. Target, I know is definitely a really huge um, corporation and they probably have like 50 people or more working on their marketing and all of that. I don't think that means that it is impossible for a one woman shop to have the same power on Instagram, okay? Because what I'm really just trying to get across is that I don't think you need 50 people 
looking and um, putting in their input and, you know, going through this many um, versions of this ad to make sure it's perfect. The point of most of this is to say you want your, your imagery, your, I really hate to use the word, but your vibe, <laughs> you want that to stay consistent. Okay, so whether that's using um, the same preset, which is actually um, the next thing that I'm going to go over. Um, a preset is basically just a filter. So making your photos visually look the same using, if you're using a photo that has text on it, using the same fonts, um, just little things like that. And even like the, um, the rate that you're posting. So you might make a post like every Monday and that's just your calling card. And maybe it's like, happy Monday. And you pose a question every Monday, people are going to remember those things. Um, oh, Nancy says she's, don't believe that you can't be. Um, I think Nancy, were you the one that shared the boss babes things? Because women in business, we get it done. Um, but hopefully that, that kind of clarified, I don't think at all, you have to be a huge corporation. Um, I did actually share Target because I thought more people <laughs> would understand um, their branding a little bit more. But overall, just to say, making sure you're consistent um, is super important. Let's talk about presets though. Presets are little um, filters that you can use on an app called Adobe Lightroom. So if you want to use a preset, one, you need to download the app Adobe Lightroom on your phone. I'm fairly positive you can do that on an Android as well, but I know for sure you can on an iPhone. Um, so download the app and then you would have to either do one of two things. You either buy a preset or a set of presets that someone else has created. So a preset is basically a saved version of um, specific edits to a photo. So a preset might be that you amp up the exposure um, 50% and you amp up the contrast 10 points and you amp up this and this and this. So when you select that preset, those settings stay the same across every photo. You can adjust presets. So once you load them up onto a photo, you can adjust those numbers, but it just gives you a great starting point so that everything is consistent, like I said before. So you can buy presets. Um, you can literally Google, like, I, I think they do make some free ones, but you can look up Instagram presets, or if you have like a certain business, there might be some specific to like presets that are good to, for photographing food or photographing women's clothing. I don't know. You can Google those, look those up, find one, find some ones that you like, or you can actually create them. Um, I'm not going to go into every single step on how to do that. There are probably like really easy and quick YouTube videos that you can look up if you're interested in that. In that. Um, but like for me, I follow, um, she's an influencer. Her name is Acacia Kersey. So um, she, this was maybe a year or two ago, but she made a set of presets um, that she sold. I don't even remember how much it was. I want to say it was like 20 or $30. So she just basically compiled, I think it's like five or six different presets and sold them. So I bought her package, got all five of them or six of them, I think. And I have those now on my Lightroom app and I've actually used it for a few of the ugly mug posts on our Instagram before. So, um, I don't know if you know any, if you can think of any influencers that have put those things up for sale before, um, but they're just super handy for making sure you're consistent. Um, then once you do that, all you have to do is start creating content that's consistent and beautiful. Let me read a couple of these other comments. Brittany says she totally agrees about consistency, which is another reason why I'm momentarily having this. Okay, I love that, Brittany. So she said for that account she mentioned before when we were talking about our favorite Instagram accounts, hers was momentary happiness. Happiness. So she said when she is scrolling, she can quickly and innately stop on her post because one, her brain has registered the connection and the value they give. So she remembers that she's seen this content like that before and she liked it. 
And two, her brain recognizes the look even before she reads the post, which is exactly what I was really trying to get across. Thank you, Brittany. So feel good value plus easy recognition equals me not accidentally scrolling past. I think that makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much for sharing your experience with that. Um, that's awesome. And then Lindsay said, Lightroom is available on Android devices. So perfect, I had that verified. <laughs> I definitely should have looked that up first, but so um, those are my quick tips for presets. It can be a rabbit hole to dive into <laughs> when you're looking them up and trying to find the right one, but they're generally relatively pretty inexpensive. Um, so if you buy some and then you end up like not fully loving it, it's not like you're spending a thousand dollars. Um, okay, last topic before we hit our Q&A is how to gain followers on Instagram. This is really just the practices that we use for ourselves, for our clients, and we have seen results from. And I will say first off that this varies from industry to industry, from business to business. So for example, Little Cakes, we started using all of these um, examples that I'm going to show you in a little bit. And I think it was in like six months, we increased their following. Don't quote me on this because again, should have found this out, but off the top of my head, in like six months, we grew their following by like a thousand to 2000 um, followers. And we can use those, the same tactics that we're using for another client. And we may only get half that. So it really just depends on who your target market is, if they're on Instagram, right? Because Little Cakes, their market is definitely on Instagram. But if, if you're a little bit on the cusp or if, um, if your industry is just not super prevalent or relevant already on Instagram, it's not to say you shouldn't be there, but it just might be a little bit more hard or a little bit harder to gain those followers. But all that to say, these are the things that we do. We have tested, we've tried and they work. So one is to share on your other social media. So um, Facebook, LinkedIn, your Snapchat if you want. Um, next up, add it to your email signature. So if you've ever received an email from me, you know that we have our ugly mug socials linked at the bottom. That's a good way to do it. That's also a good like, inadvertent way to do it because you're not like yelling at someone like, Hey, follow us on Instagram. But eventually if you're emailing back and forth, like they'll notice it. And if they're interested, they'll, they'll follow you. Third is to put a link to your Instagram on your website. If you don't have one already, already, a lot of people, um, just naturally want to link their Facebook, which is amazing. And I'm not saying you shouldn't, but don't forget about your Instagram. You can link that as well. And then the next one is to use relevant hashtags. So if you, so for us, we're a marketing agency. I'm not going to use the same hashtags to have people find us as we would for little cakes. So we use a lot of hashtags like hashtag marketing, marketing agency, um, social media tips, um, web design, web designer, all of those things. You want to make sure it's actually relevant. So the people on those hashtags are finding your content valuable and it actually means something to them because they're there for a reason. Hashtags are super important. The next one would be to actually tag your location. Um, for us, I just usually tag Alexandria, Louisiana um, since that's where we're located and that's where the majority of our clientele lives um, and that's where our, our largest um, influence is. So if people are looking at the location tag, then they might see some of our content there. Last one is to make sure you are actually following others and engaging with other accounts. So I'm going to start talking about real quick before I jump into Q&A a little bit about the statistics I found about millennials. Um, I was looking up the generational differences in like buying power. So like how much buying power <laughs> there is between like Gen Z, Gen Y, millennials, blah, blah, blah. Um, and some of it that I found was actually super interesting. So the first one I'll note, which has to do with this, is that, so those millennials, 18 to 35 year olds, 62% of them say that they will be a loyal customer to a brand 
if the brand engages with them on social media, which that's a huge number. And that's like a crazy statistics to me. Um, but I would probably be in that 62% if I had been part of the study, because I know for a fact when, when I'm commenting or if I'm messaging, um, a business or something like that, especially if they're a little bit larger, because that just human nature, it means more. Um, but if they're engaging with me, they care about me. They um, care more about me <laughs> as a human than a number and um, a purchase or a product or whatever. So that's the first statistic. The next is that um, eight out of 10, so 80% of millennials do not buy a product until they look at a review. That shook me. <laughs> I, nah, I shouldn't say that. That shocked me. Sorry. Try not to use like annoying lingo. Um, but that's huge. Another little tip I would use with that is to share client testimonials or client reviews on your page because if they're going to want to look at that anyways, if they find that on your feed, then you're cutting that um, task for them, whether they think it's a task or not, you're cutting that out and you're giving that to them already. Um, another one, which this is just a quick one, but at this point in time, millennials are actually the largest group in the workforce. That's kind of just like a little tidbit. I just thought that was super interesting. And the last one that I found was that less than 1% of millennials are affected by traditional ads, which is kind of scary. Um, but to say that means that they are mostly affected by digital marketing, social media, all of those things in that realm. Um, so those are all my tips for how to get followers on Instagram. I would say maybe the most important is to follow and engage with other people, which takes the most time, but you will see the most reward from it. Um, so liking other people's posts, following them, commenting on their posts, being engaged and actually caring about them because you want them to care about you. So, all right, guys, let me know. That's literally my whole spiel. That's it. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna look and make sure I didn't miss any comments. Okay, so Dirk, let us know that Peter McKinnon is a great photographer and a YouTuber with presets. So if you're looking for presets, that would be a great place to start looking. See if you think that Peter McKinnon's presets fit your branding. Uh, I'm sure he has multiple to choose from. Okay, Wendy, so do you have any specific suggestions for a new farmer's market business? Okay, interesting. A new farmer's market. I'm assuming that would mean that there are, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I would assume that that would mean there are multiple um, like vendors and different farms or people that are contributing to the farmer's market. So one of the first things I can think of is to share spotlights of those different vendors. Um, so if um, Billy Joe's farm sells carrots and tomatoes, do a little spotlight on him. And then once you make those posts, you can share those posts <laughs> to your story, or even it doesn't have to be that exact post, just kind of recreate that content on your Instagram story and make a highlight, make a highlight of like meet our vendors or um, something along those lines. So that if people are learning about your new farmer's market and especially if it's new, they're gonna wanna know what's being offered there. Um, that way you have that content there and they can they get a sense of who they're gonna be meeting and interacting with that they show up and the the types of produce and all of those things that they have available. I think that's a, definitely a great personal way to um, get your name out there. And what that also does is those people will be able to share that information. So if they, if you make a regular post, they can share that to their stories. And then all of their friends are gonna see it and love it and be like, oh my gosh, I need to go support Billy Joe at his farmer's market. Um, so Wendy is one of the vendors. Okay, so you're not promoting for the farmer's market, you're promoting for yourself. Um, then I would definitely stay consistent. So if this is a weekly farmer's market, post something. It doesn't have to be a regular post. Post something on your story. Um, 
post some sort of content on your Instagram every single time you're there. Be consistent. Don't make it like once a month because then people will wonder, are they there every week? Can I expect to see them this week? Be consistent, which I know is more work, but it's, it's going to be worth it because people will understand. And then they'll start thinking about that every time they see it. And they'll remember like, oh yeah, so maybe they can't make it that day or whatever day it is that you're going to be there. But they might think like, I really want to go get some of that produce. I know she'll be there next week. And they'll go. Let me see. Oh yeah, Leanne said, consider, consider sharing recipes. I love that idea. Um, that would be really cool. And then that way people are even more inclined, like if they use the recipe and they have your produce, they'll be sharing that on their personal pages and that's like free publicity and marketing for you already. So that's awesome. Marie says, is it wise to share personal photos on your business page? I'm a realtor. Okay. So Marie, I would say it is okay, but I would shy away from making the majority at least of your content, like those pictures of like your kid or your coffee or something. Um, I'm not sure like what your go-to personal content would be, but I think it's important to share a little bit about that because one, it makes you more approachable. You're reminding people that you're human and, um, people will relate to you more depending on what that content looks like. So I do think it's important. It's an important aspect. I would not tell you not to do that. But like I said, make sure you do have enough about the business too. Like if you're sharing listings or if you're sharing like quick tips about how to stage a home or all of that, you still want it to be relevant to your business. And it's not just your like trash can for all of your, your kids soccer photos. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that would be my tip. Um, I hope that kind of made sense. So let me check and make sure. Royal Martin Instagram sits at 850. They want to get to a thousand, which is like always a fun milestone to hit like a new digit. <laughs> Any other tips to help us get our next 150? Mm. I mean, off the top of my head, besides the things that I talked about before, cause I'm sure you guys are implementing many of those things. I know like a common thing people will do is to run a giveaway. Um, it is a little, there's pros and cons to that because you're going to get a lot of um, reach and brand awareness from it, like in a shorter amount of time than you normally would if you make people like share that post on their story or things like that. But people are more inclined when they do that to just unfollow you later. So you'll have some that stick around you also will have others that don't. Um, and I know it's tough for Royal Martin because you guys are so niche. Um, one thing though that you can just try if you're not already doing is to run ads. So you can run ads through Facebook. And then when you're setting all of that up, only run it on Instagram and make the dimensions and everything native to Instagram dimensions. Um, and so you're only hitting people that are on your Instagram. You can even create audiences of people that follow your Instagram and then create a lookalike audience. So Facebook takes all of those people, finds what they have in common, and then makes a new audience of people that are similar to those people. And you can push all of your content on Instagram to people like them. That would be my tip. Um, but yes, I think that is all of them, but I'm making sure and I'm going back. Okay, so I know, so Misha shared some other accounts that I need to write down. <laughs> he said, Little Ruby and um, True Food Kitchen. I do love a good food Instagram account. In my marriage, I am not the cook. My husband is, but I love to find new things to make him cook for me. So I will probably be following those people. Okay, I'm going back down. Is there any other questions, comments, concerns? Okay, let's see, Brittany says, Okay, so Brittany works for a nonprofit 
which definitely is just a different strategy that you're going to be using when you're on Instagram for a nonprofit. Um, she's been focusing on their social media presence, Facebook. I would agree, like Facebook is a good place to be. Um, and then slowly setting sites on Instagram. Her okay, her perspective is to not only try and recruit volunteers. Yes, give education and community awareness. I love that that is one of your focuses because in general for any brand or any company or business or whatever it is, I always think it's important to share educational content. Um, and I love that you're doing community awareness as well, but love that. Thank you for sharing that, Brittany. Thanks so much for watching, Teddy. Um, if you are watching this while we're not live, so after um, we are doing this right now, uh, as I'm saying this, when you're watching later, then if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them below. Um, I'll still be coming back to check on this and read some comments. Um, so yeah, please feel free to leave those and I will try to answer them as soon as I can. Michelle said awareness and education. Yes, me too, for sure. I think um, the symphony orchestra, I think some of that educational content is like super cool because like, I love the symphony, but do I understand a lot of the things that they're doing or that, that they know inherently? Not at all, but it's still super interesting. Thank you so much for watching, Nancy. Thank you for asking some questions. Hope you also stay safe. Um, all right, guys, if there aren't any more questions, please feel free to reach out if you have more questions. If you want to learn more about Ugly Mug, there's our website, uglymugmarketing.com. There's my email, Lydia at uglymugmarketing.com. Um, and our phone number is 318-290-3430. I'm not gonna make a sales pitch, but we do offer, offer Instagram marketing services if your business is interested in that. Um, thank you so much, Marie. I hope you learned some stuff. I love that you're gonna go change your bio. Um, I'll have to go find it. Thank you for watching, Kenneth. I really appreciate it. Glad you guys are learning some things. That's always really nice to hear. All right, guys, again, Feel free to reach out if you want to. Um, enjoy this photo of me jumping in the air. But that's all I've got. All right, hope you have a great weekend. Happy Friday, that's all I have for you. Um, maybe go spend an hour on Instagram and look at, look at what other businesses are doing, what you like, what you don't like. I do that way too much. Um, thanks so much for watching Misha. I really need to come by good people soon. Um, it's been a while, so I apologize, but I need to come. All right. All right, everyone, I'm out. Have a great weekend, and we will see you next time. Bye.